Hi everyone and welcome to a new episode with Webock. Today we will talk about web standards and best practices. What are the best website standards out there? Actually, before I start, I need to make a distinction between what is a web standard and what is a best practice. In the normal sense of the things, whenever we talk about standards, we look at organizations who set standards for other companies that can follow. But when it comes to web design or website design, the issue of standards is a little bit in the gray area, meaning currently there are no big organizations that is setting out any standards out there. However, because people are experimenting and doing a lot of optimization in their websites, a lot of the trend uh, in designs have been converging towards the same uh, design. So basically, if you uh, look around, especially in marketing websites, you would realize that most of them pretty much look and feel the same. And this is where standards are becoming the norm. So anything that is being used out there for 80 to 100% of the time, we're considering this as a standard. And anything which is used less than 80, between, let's say, 65 up to 80%, we're considering this to be a best practice. So what are some of the uh, standards, the web design standards out there? Uh, first of all, most important, your logo. If you have a company, then you have a logo, and your logo needs to be located on the top left-hand side of your website. This is a standard. Nearly 90% of websites are following this standard. Obviously, you can put your logo in the center of your header, but for the most part, stick to the left-hand side. The second most important standard, again, as per um, usage out there in the um, optimization world, we notice that the navigation is always in the top part of your homepage, above the fold, a place where people can see all the time. And you need to make it visible at all times. So you see one of the standards is having it as a fixed navigation at the very top of your homepage. Again, an important aspect value proposition that needs to be visible above the fold on at least your main home page and value proposition means what makes you unique as a company if you're uh, providing services to uh, other businesses or other consumers then you need to be very specific about what makes you unique what is so distinct about your services so in a form of a paragraph or probably some bullet points make sure that this is visible above the fold and finally a call to action on every single web page that you have on your home page make sure that there is a call to action a way of telling the user that you need or here's a funnel here's a way for you to move forward to another page. For example, you might instruct or kind of give an indication to your users to sign up for a newsletter or probably uh, to go about and register on your homepage for a free white paper or any other service that you're providing. Moving on to talking about best practices. Obviously, these are more experimental area where uh, people are still uh, actually doing it but between 65 to 79 percent of the time to start off make sure that your website is mobile responsive this has been going on for nearly 10 years or so google has been shouting out loud and many of the web designers that your website needs to be mobile friendly it needs to respond according to the device that is um uh, presenting your web page so it's a tablet or if it's a mobile phone or even if it's a desktop make sure that your website responds uh, in a good way the layout needs to be designed in a way that, so that the user can see it clearly and navigate in a in a nice way next 
if you have social media, uh, if, if you have social media sites such as uh, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, make sure you have icons and links uh, in your header or footer, or both. And also make sure that you have a search feature. A lot of companies miss on this very important aspect of a home page. You need to make sure that you have a search box, a search input box where people can type in something and hit the search button and find results from pages on your home page. It's very important. Make sure you talk to a designer or a developer and ensure that you have such kind of functionality implemented in your website. And if you don't, then you can use the Google Search Console. And it's a free tool. I think it's called Site Search as well. It's a free tool that allows you to crawl your uh, local pages of your homepage and um, have a nice uh, search result similar to Google. And finally, make sure you have contact information on your pages on every page make sure that it's very clear in your header as well as in your footer because people most likely would like to give you a call most likely they are not interested in uh, looking around your homepage and spending five to ten minutes they just want a phone number and they want to make that action right away so make it accessible you might want to even um, have it linked directly to make the phone call. You can do that using uh, an href which is a tell with your phone number. Ask your developer or designer to implement it on your uh, on your phone number. And finally, in my opinion, this is very important. If you're a small to medium sized company and you don't have a brand guideline, then you need to start thinking about it. This basically entails the colors of your home page. Make sure you have a set number of colors that you're going to stick to. And also your font needs to be consistent. And finally, you need to talk about the tone. If you have some kind of verbiage on your home page, make sure that it is consistent throughout the whole website and try to talk to one or two uh, content editors and make sure that they talk to each other and their vision towards the tone that is on your homepage is exactly the same. And finally, you can bundle all this into what we call the style guideline or a brand guideline. Create it, even if it's uh, starting it from scratch, as long as you have the colors, the font, and the tone and make it very simple so that users can understand what it is and can abide by these uh, guidelines that you set. This is pretty much it for website design standards. It's very simple. It's not complicated. Make sure you go through my points again. If you have any questions, you can fire me a question right here in the comment section below. And don't forget, always sign up for an account, a free account with Webock, if you want to learn more about web design and web development. Until a new episode, take care.